How's it going? Good. So I want you all to uh, take a moment to uh, shake out the day. You've been in your, your academic brain all day, right? A lot of illumination. So I want you to uh, shake out your legs and your hands a little bit. And I want you to find your heart brain. And then I want you to connect it to your head brain, all right? You there? Cool. Um, so we're going to go on a journey. I'm an organizer. I'm a creative. I'm a Black Lives Matter organizer. Uh, I'm a law student, which explains my confused outfit, right? A little bit court, a little bit hip hop, <laughs> or a little bit diva. <laughs> you can decide which parts match up with what. Uh, so prepare for a journey, all right? My grandmother tells me that cursing is unladylike. That with a mouth like mine, I'd be lucky to ever find a husband. Which is funny, because I never heard her mention hers. My mother tells me that my grandmother loved this man till the day she died. I don't understand why, see, he left his kids and his wife for another man's kids and wife. The only difference between my grandmother and the other woman is none of the new wife's kids were actually his. When my grandma died, I read that his name was Dawn, which explains why she preferred dusk. When the sun went down, my grandmother came back to life. Most doctors would call her an insomniac, but grandma, I understand. We poets know that truth telling is easier at night when no one can see you cry. When no one can ask you why you never tried to remarry, explain away your loneliness, or question your love. See, my grandmother's love and her loneliness, endless oceans of overflowing forgiveness that would take another clenched fist beating, another raw jaw, another black eye, another woman. You had better hide that bruise with makeup. Make up a story, woman. People are looking at you, woman. Stop crying before I give you something to cry about. Another morning. Another night of cleaning up his vomit while he sleeps on the floor in an alcohol-induced stupor. Another morning of biting your tongue, of swallowing your pride with tight-lipped kisses before he forces himself into you. Another story, another lie, so other women do not think that you, you're a bad mother, bad lover. Another arch back over your youngest daughter, hoping you can shelter her from the downpour of wind and waves from men who love like salt and seawater upon your already too cracked and thirsty lips, woman. Grandma, I know that I cuss like a fucking sailor. <laughs> but shit, you never told me these waters called love were so rough. I've never blamed you for making your own excuses. But excuse me if I refuse to exchange a few choice words for so-called ladylike lips. I find violence and silence not to be in line with my humanity, Grandma. Woman, women, don't you think it's about time we all felt free to have loose lips? So y'all haven't got to have a lot of uh, participation today. I'm a teacher, so I'm gonna need some participation, all right? You can say all right. Excellent. Okay, so I want you to sit with your five senses. That would be uh, hearing, be sight, smell, taste, touch. I want you to get in touch with your feelings. And I want you to sit with them for a minute. I want you to walk into that story I just shared with you, a personal story that I crafted into an artistic way to, in a way I think what art does is get past sometimes the offense or the fear that we feel about tough issues so that folks can sit and listen with you. I call it edutainment, all right? Now, while you're thinking about that, I'm going to flash some thoughts across the screen. The first being what the World Health Organization says about uh, intimate partner violence, a statistic that 35% of all women globally will at one point in their life experience this, that every 90 seconds, Someone is sexually assaulted. That poem took two and a half minutes, maybe three. That's two people. Since we're on a college campus, 
somewhere between one in four and one in five women will experience an attempted or completed rape. Definition of sexism. And my personal favorite definition of feminism. Who knows Beyonce? <laughs> Great, but who knows the author of that particular quote? Yeah, even more important, right? I could have got up here and given you all those stats. I could have talked to you about definitions. I could have convinced you you need to be a feminist and that you need to be anti-sexist. Instead, I wanted to share with you a personal story. So when you are confronted by sexism, you think about that interaction that you and I just shared with all these other people in the room. See, our stories are not the same. There's different nuances, but there's underlying themes. Those statistics I just showed you should convince you that someone in this room has experienced some sort of sexual trauma. Should convince you that there are people who have experienced sexism and that feminism might be a good thing to think about, right? In the poetry community, we do this thing called snapping. When you like something, you're welcome to snap so I know you're with me. All right, now that you've been thinking, I need two very brave souls. And I want you to give me, oh, I see a hand already. Two to three sentences about something that stuck with you out of that poem. You want to raise your hand again? Yeah, right here. Tight-lipped kisses. I'm sorry, what was that? I like the tight-lipped kisses part. Thank you. What about that stuck with you, if you could give it to me in one sentence? Uh, I didn't realize what the, <laughs> okay, give me a minute. Words. So that particular line, tight lip kisses, stuck with you. It means that it resonated with you somewhere. I saw one more hand. Who's the other person? I need one more person. Right there in the back. I know audience participation, it's rough, right? Uh, so I thought the line about love being like rough seas or something like that, I thought that was really nice. Well, and why did you think that was nice? Uh, well, I mean, if you want like the, you want the personal, the, the really like the part that resonated with me. Yeah, where did it resonate with you? Well, I don't know. I think that I'm, uh, I really like throw myself out there a lot. I'm very, I, I'm perfectly comfortable making myself vulnerable to somebody else and like putting your heart out there. And I think that's how you make a great connection with somebody else. But that means that there's big ups and big downs when you're, when you really care for somebody. So, word. Yeah. Thank you for getting personal with that. Yeah, give a round of applause for someone getting personal. That's hard to do. So here's the beauty of poetry. I bet he and I probably don't have the same life experiences. I bet me and this audience member right here don't have the same life experiences. But poetry is able to take themes, things that we all experience, get in one vein, and tell a nuanced story that multiple audience members can connect to. And what I hope it does is it sticks in your heart. It may not change your mind right then, but it plants a seed. And what do seeds do? They, they grow. They grow into things. I think of spoken word like show and tell. Okay? A little different. But remember in elementary school where you would bring your object to school, you were really excited to share, maybe you were nervous because you don't like to speak in front of people. That was me, believe it or not. And you would share about your item, what it meant to you. And then your classmates would do the same and you'd get to know each other and you'd be connected and you would see like, maybe we're not that different. There's some things that are different, but there's a lot of things that are the same. And we're not that alone. Poets do this. They paint a picture for you to show you something. And that picture starts to tell you something. And in the telling, it might reveal something in you. So the lines that stuck with you revealed something in you. It was my words, but really it settled somewhere in yourself and helped you see something about what you were thinking about. This is what I love about spoken word. It gets to the heart of the matter and the matter of the heart without me ever having to give you a statistic or a definition, and yet it may actually change your point of view on a social issue. All right? Beautiful. So this is a piece of art that stuck with me. It's very simple. It's hands stuck in grass. Some of the hands are black and one of the hands are white. As a Black Lives Matter organizer, I'm constantly struggling to find a way to get people to understand why we use that particular phrase. And sometimes it's best to paint a visual image from the room to see what exactly it is we're struggling against. We are literally burying our children 
at rates much higher than other groups in the United States because of police brutality and violence. And this isn't to say that someone else's life doesn't matter. This is to say that it's important to draw attention on the particular social issue that is happening. We have to talk about exactly that issue. And so Black Lives Matter is a movement created by these three black women, black queer women, Patrice, Alicia, and Opal. And their goal in creating this movement was to encourage black folks to resist the system that dehumanizes them and ask non-black people to be willing to be anti-racist and address anti-blackness in our society, which creates this image. So what does this have to do with artists? I idolize this person right here. Paul Robeson, actor, lawyer, athlete, first black man to play Othello, a character that was traditionally played by a white man and blackface. And he used his platform as an artist to speak to social justice issues. Frida, amazing woman. Who knows Frida? Excellent visual artists painted about feminist issues and Latina issues, and we're still talking about her visual art today and what it means, and people are processing it within themselves. Audre Lorde, an amazing queer black poet who has talked about intersectionality in her art in a way that people are continuing to dig into it, and they're finding how it resonates with themselves, how it resonates with their identity, because we all have complex, multifaceted identities, and sometimes art is the only way to start the conversation. So in the Black Lives Matter movement, we have some statistics that we use. One is, every 28 hours, a black man, woman, or child is killed by police or vigilant law enforcement that 25.1% of black American women live in poverty, which is higher than any other ethnic group, and the average life expectancy for a black transgender woman is 35 years. Now these three statistics say something to us, right? They don't paint the whole picture. And sometimes you need an artist to humanize it for you, to take the statistic off the paper and connect it to a story. In Seattle, we are fighting this same battle. Seattle, I know, we're progressive, right? Yeah, we're progressive. But we also still deal with the same issues. A lot of people know how to use the language, but they don't know how to live it out. So part of what I want to encourage you to do is how do you align yourself with a movement that maybe you don't fully understand? Well, one, if you're non-black, I would encourage you to do some reading on what it means to be anti-racist. Get with other people who share your identity, who you can, in a safe space, have conversations about what does it mean for me to oppose a system that targets my black and brown, black and brown brothers and sisters and those who don't conform to you know, heteronormative gender, because that is what it is. Different talk. Um, <laughs> and that's how you can be a part of the movement. That's a starting point, right? This image says a lot to me. Because really what we're talking about is the value of people's lives. And it is always hard when we talk about privilege, white privilege, and white supremacy to unpack it in a way that makes people comfortable. Because let's be honest, it's not comfortable. As a part of this movement, part of my challenge is to constantly be finding ways to better articulate what we're seeking. And as a black, queer woman, what I most want is to see the people whose communities I represent be humanized and receive equity. The way I'm going to do that is by continuing to share my art, continuing to march in the streets, and also, you know, this law student thing, hopefully it pans out for me, maybe as a lawyer. <laughs> um, so in closing, I want to share with you a piece of art, because my number one point is art changes minds. It gets to the matter the heart of the matter and the matter of the heart. It shows to tell you things and tells you things that show and reveal to you what lives inside of you. So whatever you experience while I do this poem, I ask you, dig down deep in it. You too can become a creative. It's, it sounds a lot, it's a lot easier than it is. You practice creativity. For me, it is a way of processing the world around me and bettering myself every day. Do you see the boy in the corner? The one 
with the prettiest blue eyes. Do you see how he carries well-intentioned honesty like a badge? How entitlement wears his shoulders like a mantle and privilege holds his hands? Do you see how he speaks to the class? How he looks at me like target practice, fires off. Nikita, I'm just being honest. When you say Black Lives Matter, it makes me feel like you're taking something from me, like you're calling me racist. I feel like, see, suddenly he trails off with hesitation. The room cannot hear him, but I can feel his words. There are a pulse in the nation's vein. He's not the only one who thinks like this. He continues, you make me feel guilty for being white, but I didn't shoot the boy in the streets. I don't want his blood on my hands. See, all of a sudden his words hit me. I am shell-shocked rubble, heavy with the prayers of ancestors and uttered sounds that I need to understand. I am slave ship, chattel and parcel thrown overboard when my flesh cannot complete the journey. I am stolen, mouth that cannot speak my mother tongue. I will tell you my story, but history is not mine when I'm still property. Auction block, runaway slave. I am sharecrop land stolen by genocide and broken treaty. I am prison of war, I am black boy blood on pavement, black girl face down in dirt, black trans woman skirt shirt torn, I am exposed, I am hands up, please do not shoot us while we are trying to carry our children through underground railroads, I am fist fro power, black beauty and Selma sun, heat beat down on pain with hope that we can march again and again and again, each time it's still the same, they tell us in time, give it time, things will change but our souls bleed and our throats go raw, I cannot control this riot, and my skin, when waiting, burns like pepper spray, like blunt object, like police baton shoved in my face as a tired beast of a mask, showing you just how much I need to be free of this fear to respond to the boy in the corner, still waiting for me to wash his hands, but I cannot let him open this can of worms, go fishing for answers in skin that he will never swim through these waters. These waters are too rough. This boat is not safe. I am afraid of being hooked another throwaway. Just another mad diary of a black woman alone in a space with no one who understands why the streets are wailing, why the air tastes of iron, why the ghost of Katrina will not leave us, why Mississippi is still burning, why the humidity in Ferguson drips like blood as New York concrete chokes on roses caught in the cracks. They cannot breathe. We cannot breathe. I cannot breathe, so I become fire, burn, smoke, billowing tower of civil disobedience. I am revolution. Was this country not built on revolution, on a escape on protest, on gunfire, on freedom, on the backs of black bodies, the land of the brave, the home of the free. They say pull yourself up by your bootstraps with the pair I was given would not fit so I made my own. I call them black lives matter. This is not your prosecution. This is not an indictment. Please do not make me your conviction. I do not need nor do I want a white guilty plea. When I say black lives matter, I'm not trying to take anything from you. I am simply trying to dig past the pain and the sorrow to find the seed of hope that still persists, that I may give life back to myself, that I might rehumanize myself. Thank you.